Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integration. Um, today I want to just talk briefly about um, Home Assistant and what the use case is for it and why you might want to install it and use it with your inverter. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are looking at this and maybe not seeing what, what they would be able to use it for. So I wanted to explain that and um, then just give a little bit of background to Home Assistant, um, how it works, what it costs, where you get it from, all those types of things. So I hope you enjoy the video. Um, the second thing I wanted to say was just to all my new subscribers, thank you very much. Um, we now have over 100 subscribers and um, the, so there's obviously a lot of people interested in this content. What I would like to say is if you would like to see me covering any specific topics, then please drop me a message on uh, Facebook in, under comments and please like and subscribe. We do appreciate it. Um, so today's, um, today's video, I'm just going to start off with what Home Assistant is and um, you know, how it all started. So Home Assistant uh, is an open source project. Um, it started in 2013, so it's almost 10 years old. It'll be 10 years old in December. And um, it was uh, built to fix a problem. And that problem is, and I'm not sure if you've uh, maybe got this issue, is that there are a lot more smart devices coming out nowadays. We have smart light bulbs, smart power switches, um, smart vacuum cleaners, um, smart air fryers. Um, everything is becoming network connected. And on my phone, I've got 12 different apps for all my different devices, my SunSync app, my uh, uh, vacuum cleaner, my light bulbs, all those things. So what Home Assistant does is you can think of it as an operating system and uh, for a smart home. And it pulls all of those devices into one interface and allows those devices to interact amongst each other. Um, I, for example, um, have uh, my alarm is connected and I can use my infrared sensors in my house to switch light bulbs on and off automatically. So if it senses someone walking down a passageway, it'll turn the passageway light on, that type of thing. Um, the best thing about it is it's free of charge. Um, you can download it from uh, homeassistant.io is the website. And um, it sits locally on your network on a very small computer, either a Raspberry Pi, or you can put it on an old laptop or something like that. doesn't have to have a monitor on it. All the interfacing with Home Assistant is done through a web browser. So you don't need a keyboard or anything on it. It's just a headless PC sitting in a corner. You can also run it on virtual machines. And um, there's a very good uh, getting started, how, how the installation works, all of those things. So um, the, I will put some links to some, uh, if you are interested in selecting hardware to run Home Assistant on, and um, you can take it from there. Um, the, you know, the, if we have a look at the number of devices that the Home Assistant connects to, there are over 1,200 integrations. So basically, almost any smart device you can think of, and all the integrations are open source, which means they are free of charge. So like Gary Waterworth did the SunSync integration for us to connect to the SunSync dongle, and Stefan Joubert put together the one for the Solarman dongle. Um, there's lots of uh, open source projects like that. And then um, for customizing your uh, your your um, panels and that type of thing. Um, people like Flipex 06, there are a lot of other projects on there as well, and it's all fully customizable. The, the, the main thing is that you need to put in a little bit of, um, there's, there's some school fees and some time that you need to spend to get to know how it works. Um, some of the things which, which I use Home Assistant for with, uh, on my own um, installation, um, this isn't my own installation. This is just uh, my demo one, which I'm using for the for my videos. Um, this is my installation over here. I've got a, an integration for um, Eskom to push, so it pulls over all the latest uh, load shedding schedules into Home Assistant. 
and I can make decisions on um, my battery charging and, and that type of thing using my load shedding schedule. I have a solar forecaster which forecasts my um, my solar production from my inverter for the next day. Um, it's very handy if I want to optimize the use of my batteries. Um, if it's going to be a good day tomorrow, then I can set my batteries to discharge to um, say 20%. If it's not going to be a great day tomorrow, then I might only want to set them to discharge to 30%, for example. And um, we are now getting to the point where we're able to uh, write those changes to the inverter automatically. Um, the other thing I do at the moment is I decide, it, my uh, home assistant decides whether to switch my cool pump on the next day at 8 o'clock in the morning. It checks if there's going to be enough solar for that day. If the solar forecast is good, then it'll switch the cool pump on at 9 o'clock and it will run it for uh, 6 hours. So um, if, if the forecast is not great, then it will keep the, the pump off. Um, you can also see I've got, um, these are my switches over here. So I have got um, separate smart switches for my pool, my stables, my main geezer, cottage geezer, kitchen geezer, geezer, borehole pump. And the, if I were to run all of these at the same time, it would overload my inverter. So you can create um, workflows. So it will um, switch the first geezer on Watch, for, watch how much power that first geezer is drawing. When that drops down, switch that geezer off and switch the next geezer on. So you can optimize that as well. Um, there are, um, these are my, so you, you'll see over here, if I turn my, uh, my geezer on down there, for example, there you will see my, that's the load that my geezer is putting. So it's almost instantaneous. Um, what I also have is a device called an Emporia View. I'll uh, insert the picture of that for you guys to see. It's a 16 port, uh, it's got 16 CT clamps. Um, it clamps all of the breakers on my DB board and uh, gives me my power usage over all 16 circuits of my DB board. So I can see exactly where the power is going, who's using how much power, and I also have a daily total. So it will tell me. I can see quite quite easily if something's using a lot of power or not, and um, it's handy if you have a, a, a four kilowatt load on your inverter, for example, but you don't know who's using the power. So it's good for tracing that type of thing down. Um, the other thing I have is I use um, a thing called Grafana. All of this information which is being um, sent to home assistant gets captured into a database. And you can then go and look at that data on, um, and the best, one of the, a very good way to visualize it is using Grafana. This is a Grafana dashboard. And this shows me um, what my total load is at the moment. Um, you can see if I go and turn that, um, that geezer on again. Um, okay, cool, turn the geezer on. If I go and look, that'll jump up to two and a half kilowatts in a moment. So it's going up. Okay, um, they were generating 7.3 kilowatts of power. We're at um, 46 hertz, I think. We're at load shedding at the moment. That's my battery state of charge, grid voltage, inverter voltage. I hope we're not actually at 46 hertz. That would not be great. Um, there's my uh, amps from the panels, volts from the panels, power from the panels. Um, Energy purchased today, energy used today. Um, so that's my grid import. Um, that's my state of charge, which has been running. I've got, and these are all customizable. You can make them all, um, all yourself. Uh, lots of videos on YouTube on how to do that. This is when I'm pulling power from the grid. So you can see over there, I was pulling from 8.56, so from 9 o'clock until 10 o'clock. So so uh, that's probably my battery settings. I need to go and check that and see if I need to uh, reduce my minimum battery settings because it's pulling power from the grid. Um, here's my battery discharge. How many amps? I've uh, peaked at 100 amps, so that's good. Grid frequency. 
Uh, grid frequencies are great for watching uh, load shedding. So um, you can do things in home assistance like automatically switch off heavy load devices. Um, if the frequency drops below 40 hertz, go um, check how much solar power I'm producing. If I'm producing less than three kilowatts, turn the geezer off. Or um, if I'm pulling power out of my battery, turn the geezer off. Those types of things. Um, that's just my history. Um, maximum power produced. This is my data from um, from all of my uh, devices which are using. There you can see the geezer, the cottage geezer was pulling 2.8 kilowatts and where everything else is. Um, so there the stable geezer was on and the cottage geezer at the same time. So that was a total load of just over 4 kilowatts. Um, it's all really about optimizing your power setup. Um, I started with an 8 kilowatt sensing converter and I had a lot of loads in it and it was trying to optimize those loads as best I can with the limited budget that I had and um, I've, and the limited number of batteries. I've now increased the number of batteries and I've increased my, I've increased the size of my inverter. I've now got a 16 kilowatt um, day and I've got a uh, 4 BSL um, 6.4 kilowatt battery. So I've got a reasonable amount of battery power. Um, this is a graph which compares the forecast solar to my actual production. Um, I'm not really worried about this because of the way the app works. Basically, I just want a number that if it's below that number, then I don't switch my pool on. If it's above that number, then I switch the pool on. So it, that doesn't really have to be that accurate. And uh, I've got another sensor in a geezer which um, just tracks my um, solar geezer temperature. Um, so I hope that that has sold you guys on installing Home Assistant. Um, you can start off with something very basic. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was, um, this is just the sensors which I use on a, on a normal day-to-day -day basis. Um, so this is another dashboard which um, the guys on the Power Forum have been uh, posting. So I've been playing around with that to get um, all the sensor values for each of these uh, things. And then I want to display that on an iPad and have that on the wall in my kitchen. So it's a quick way to uh, have a look at it. But um, if we have a look over here, this is all of the smart devices in my house. So you can see there's my house alarm. It connects to my CCTV cameras, pulls that. Um, it's uh, all the sensors in the, and you can make use of any of these values that are coming in. Um, so really it's, I think for everybody, everybody's use case is different. And the thing about Home Assistant is that you can customize it to whatever you want to do. Now, as far as uh, resources for, um, for people with Home Assistant, there's a great community on uh, the Power Forum who are very active with um, integrations into inverters and that type of thing. So if you've got questions, you can ask over there. There is also another forum called Energy Talk. Um, there are the, um, on uh, Home Assistant, there's some great um, uh, uh, channels on Home Assistant for, um, for you to, to ask questions. Um, there's a lot, it's a very, very active project. So you just need to find it and uh, ask. Um, if you ask on the Power Forum, you'll more than likely get an answer there. Um, I hope that answers uh, a lot of your questions. Um, if you do have anything else that you would like to see me covering, please let me know and um, just put it in the comments and um, I will get round to it. I am, um, the other thing I just wanted to say is I am not a professional solar installer or anything like that. I don't make any money out of um, the solar product. It's uh, something which I do because it's uh, a great hobby and I enjoy uh, solving my energy problems in my house. So um, I'm a tinkerer. Thank you very much for your time. And um, I hope to see you guys joining our uh, solar integrations community. Thank you very much.